Bambi by Felix Sultan Chapter 14 One day they were deep in the woods looking for the little clearing when Bambi had last come across the elder. Bambi told Fairlain about him with great enthusiasm. Maybe we'll find him again. I really want to find him again. That would be nice, said Fairlain Perkley. I'd rather like to talk with him sometime. But she's not telling the truth. She may well have been curious, but in fact she was afraid of the elder. The sky was already light grey. The sun was about to rise. They ambled around vice next to each other in a place where the bushes and wild cabbages stood isolated rather than vegeta- vegetation. So there was a clear view of all, di- all directions. They heard a rustling not far away. They immediately stopped and looked in that direction. The stag strode slowly and powerfully through the bushes into the clearing. In the twilight it was not possible to see any colours. He appeared as an enormous grey shadow. Fernie immediately screamed. Bambi took hold of himself. He was, of course, not just as startled as Feline. The scream only made it worse, but a voice that sounded so helpless. He just felt pity for her and forced himself to reassure her. What's the matter then? He whispered anxiously. But there was a tremble in his voice. What's the matter? He didn't do us any harm. Fernie simply continued screaming. Don't get so upset, my love. It's not nice. Bambi urged her. It's ridiculous of all. To always be afraid of these gentlemen. They're relatives of ours, after all. But Fernand did not want to hear anything about their being relatives. She stood there very stiff, scared at Stag, but he went um, went um, as he went unbothered in, in, on his way. She screamed and screamed. Put yourself together, called it Bambi. What's he doing to think what's he going to think of us? There's nothing that could have calmed Fernand down. He could think what he think once, she said. Well, I'm screaming, oh, oh, Baya, nobody ever, nobody should be as big as that. She continued to scream, Baya, went to, went to say, leave me alone, I can't help it. I have to, Baya, 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 Baya. They were now standing in a little clearing, and looking languidly in the grass for something they tasty to eat. He looked eternally at Feline, she panicked. And at the calm, at that calm and relaxed sag, so he rose up in Bambi, the words of comfort. He offered to Feline, also helped him overcome his own alarm, sight of the stag. Now he scored himself for Feline in the same pitiful state every time he saw the stag. A state well, where horror, excitement, admiration, and inferiority all mixed together made him suffer. That's all nonsense, he's decided with each other, much effort. Now I'm going to be right up, going right up to him and induce myself. Don't do that, shouted Feline. Don't do that. Oh, nothing terrible happened. Oh, I'm going to do it. Whatever happens, Bambi retorted. Stag, so relaxed as he w- picked out all the best things that he paid no attention at all. Very line. As he screamed, it seemed to Bambi, he was far too haughty. He felt injured and humiliated. I'm, I'm going out the air. He said, just calm down. Nothing's going to happen. You'll see, you wait here. He actually did not go out there. But Verlaine did not wait. She did not want to wait, nor did the slightest, nor did she have the courage to do so. She swung round and ran away, before away, and could still be heard as he got further and further away. But ah, oh, but ho! Oh. Bambi could, would have liked to go after her, but no longer really possible. He pulled himself together and went forward. Through those twigs and branches, he could see the stag standing in a clearing, his head lowered to the ground. Bambi felt his heart pumping. He went out there. The stag suddenly raised his high head high, looked over to him. Then, as if confused, he looked straight ahead. Bambi saw the both movements. They were very haughty. Away the stag looked at him. Away he was now occupied with so looking straight ahead, as if there's nobody there. Bambi did not know what he should do. He had come out here with a firm intention of speaking to the stag. Good morning, he would have said. My name is Bambi. May I ask what your name is, sir? Certainly, he had imagined this. It flowing very smoothly. Now it turned out not to be simple as he thought. What was the use of here of having the best intentions? Bambi did not want to seem to be badly brought up, but that is how he would have seen if he came out here without saying a word. Nor did he want to pose himself on the stag. But that was not. But that is what he would be doing if he started speaking. The stag stood there in indignant majesty. Bambi was alarmed and felt humiliated. He tried in vain to shake himself into doing something and just kept one thought 
and just one thought kept running through his head. Why should I let him frighten me? I'm just as good as he is. Look, just as good as he is. He did not help. Barry continued to feel frightened and felt deep in his heart of him. He was not just as good as he is. Not by a long way. He felt pitiful. And he needed all his strength to keep him any kind of dignity. He did not look stag look to him and thought, He's charming, truly beautiful. So good looking, so elegant, so fine in all his movements. I better, better not stare at him like this. It would really not be proper. I might even embarrass him. He looked away from Bambi and went back to graze into the distance. A haughty look, Bambi decided, unbearable, the way he puffs himself up. Stag thought, I like to talk with him. He seems to like, so likeable, it's so stupid the way people never talk to each other. And he continued to occupy himself with grazing thoughtfully into the distance, just like the air of him. For him, said Bambi, people like that always act as they were the only people in the world. But why should I, what should I say to him? The stag wondered. I never had a, any practice in this. I say something ridiculous and make a fool of myself. And I'm sure he's very clever. Bambi pulled himself together and looked hard at the stag. He's so majestic, he thought. Still unaware of himself. Well, perhaps another time, the stag finally concluded. He walked away unsatisfied, but majestic. Bambi embittered, stayed where he was. Chapter 15. The forest was steaming under the burning sun. Ever since it had risen, it had been, it had been drinking all the clouds out of the sky. Even the finished wisp, but now it rained alone, and expanse of blue, they pale by the heat. Over the meadows and the treetops, the air shrim, shimmed, shimmered in the tri- grassy, transparent waves like it does, like a flame. But a leaf moved, not a leaf moved, not a blade of glass. The birds remained silent. They sat hidden in the shade. The leaves did not move from the spot. All the paths and lanes for the clearings were empty. There's no animals moving anywhere. The forest lay motionless in the dazzling light. It was in flame. The earth breathed, the trees, the brushes, the, the bushes, the animals breathed in the weighty luxury of this heat. Bambi slept. He slept a happy night. Into the light of the morning, rumping the fair line. It was just bliss that he could he had even forgot to eat. It's such bliss that he even forgot to eat. But that was because he was tired himself out so much he did not feel any hungrier. His eyes felt shut. He had just got into the middle of the undergrowth. He stopped, laid himself down, fell straight to sleep, and Jim was inflamed by the sun, threw out a bitter sharp smell, fine aroma of the young dampness rose in his head. Exonerated him. He slept and gave him new strength. Suddenly he woke and felt confused. Was not Fernand calling him? Calling out? Baby looked around him in memory. He could still see him as he stood there, close by, hornfuls and picking off the leaves where he lay down. He thought she would stay there beside him. But now she was gone. She'd probably become tired of being alone and now calling for him to come and find her. As Bambi listened, he wondered how long he could have been asleep, how many times Ferling could have called. He could not work it out. His head was still dull between the veil of sleep. Then came a call came again. Bambi swung around suddenly to face the direction. The sound came from there it was again. He suddenly cheerful. He felt wonderfully refreshed. Felt he could re- he'd rested long enough. Felt strengthened. He felt immensely hungry. He heard a call again, loud and clear. As firm as gentle bird song, yearning and little tender. Come, come. Yes, that was her voice. That was for lying. Bambi rushed from where he was. With such urgency that the thin twigs and the brushes, bushes broke and their hot green leaves merely rustled. But while he was jumping, he had to stop, throw himself to one side. It stood the elder blocking his way. The only thing seething in Bambi was his love. He did not care with, about the elder any more. He would certainly come across him again sometime. But now he had no time for the older gentleman. However vulnerable they may be, he who could not could only think of now was Fernine. He made a perfectory greeting and wanted to get quickly past him. Where are you going? the elder asked seriously. Baby is slightly ashamed. Wonder if he could talk this way out of it. 
Aker took his way out of it. But then he regained his senses and answered honestly to, to, to her. Don't go, said the elder. The second spark of anger rose up and bade me just one. Not good, Aferno. How could the elder expect him not that of him? Just one of my way, thought Bambi, and he quickly looked at the elder, but the depth of the gaze directed at him, for the elder's dark eyes held him where he was. He shook with impatience, but he did not run away. She's calling for me, he said, by way of explanation. He said in a way that was clearly pleading. Don't get in my way. No, said the elder. She's not calling for you. The sound came again, loud and clear like birds on. Come, again, again now, shouted Bambi as she came well, of course, listen to me. I'm listening, the elder nodded. Goodbye then, Bambi threw at him curtly. But the elder commanded him, stay here. What is it you want? What is it you want then? said Bambi out of control. Let me go. I haven't got time for this. Please, Finally, is calling for me. You must be able to see. I'm telling you, said the elder, that is not for Lane. Bambi was puzzled, but I recognise her voice. I can hear her quite clearly. Listen to me, the elder continued. A call came again. The ground was burning under Bambi's feet. Later, I'll come back, he implored. No, said the elder sadly. You will not come back. Not ever. A call came yet again. I got to, I got to. Bambi's beginning entirely to lose control of himself. All right then, the elder explained. The command, the two of us will go there together. Quickly, Bambi declared, run ahead. No, go slowly. The elder now commanded in a voice that left Bambi with no choice but to obey. You stay behind me, step by step. The elder began to move forward. Bambi followed behind him, impatient and sighing. Listen, said the elder, but stop him. How many, ever many times you hear that call? Do not move from my side. If, not, if it is Furline, we'll find us soon enough. But it is not Furline. Do not let it tear you away from me. It all depends on whether you trust me or not. Bambi did not dare to contradict him and remained silent. The elder walked slowly forward and Bambi followed. Oh, how skilled the elder was now knowing how was in knowing how to walk. No sound came from under his hoofs. Not a leaf moved, not a twig cracked. In this way, the elder crept through the dense undergrowth, leading his way under the tangle of ancient bushes. Bambi could only be amazed. He had admired the elder despite his feverish impatience. He never realised it was possible to go forward in this way. The call came again and again. The elder stopped, listened, and nodded his head. Bambi stood near him. Shaken with yearning, tortured by what he had to do, and understood nothing. The elder stopped several times without the call having been heard. He would throw his head up high, listen, and though Bambi heard nothing, the elder turned away from the direction the call was coming down, coming from. He was going to approach it in a curve. This made Bambi very angry. The call came over again and again, came over and again. At last, they were getting nearer. Nearer still, and very near. The elder whispered, Whatever you see now, don't move, do you hear? Pay attention to everything I do. And you do exactly the same. Be careful and don't panic. A few steps further on, there, is, there came suddenly that sharp, simulated smell Bambi knew so well. Strong his nose, it's so strong, he nearly cried out. He stood there as if nailed to the ground. His heart suddenly began to beat so hard he could feel it in his throat. The elder stood relaxed next to him. He showed a direction of his eyes there. But there stood he. He stood quite near, close nearby, pressed against the trunk of an oak tree, covered with hazel bushes. A gentle call could be heard. Come, come. All that could be seen was his back. His face was very unclear. It could only be seen of at all when he turned his head slightly on one, so- one side. Bambi was completely confused. So shocked he'd only slowly come to understand. He's standing there. It was him being imitated fell on his voice. It was him who said, wind whistling, come, come. Pale horror ran through all Bambi's limbs. Thought the flight came up from his heart and pulled him, tugged at him. Keep still, the elder probably commanded. A whisper, as if he wanted to preempt the outward outbreak of panic. And Bambi, with some effort, kept controlling himself. The elder looked at him. It seemed to Bambi at first, despite... Where he was, the elder was gently mocking him. But then, straight afterwards, he seemed once more to be fully serious and benevolent. Bambi blinked as he looked over to where he stood and felt he would no longer be able to stand, being near something as horrifying as this. The elder seemed to understand what Bambi was thinking and whispered, let's go as he turned around and, le- turned around and left. 
They crept carefully away, the elder moving in strange zigzags. The Bambi could not understand why. Even now he found it hard to contain his impatience. He followed those slow steps. Been his yearning for lane fair line had driven him along the path, the place. Now the urge to flee was chasing through his veins. Elder Lowe continued his slow walk and stopped, listened, went on still on the zigzag route route. Stopped away again, went on again, slowly, very slowly. Must be must by now have been very be one well away from that place of terror. Keeps on stopping, so such so suppose it'd be all right to start speaking again. And I'll say thank you to him. He could see the elder just in front of him. He disappeared in a dense tangle of dogwood brushes. Not a leaf moved, not a twig cracked, and the elder crept into it. Bambi followed him and very tried very hard to pass through just as silently, but just as oddly the void making any noise sound. But he did not have that luck. The leaves rustled gently, branches bent under pressure of his flank, flickered back and again with loud rattling. Brood twigs broke with a quick, loud crack against his breast. You saved my life, Bambi continued to ponder. What shall I say to him? He saved my life, Bambi continued to ponder. What shall I say to him? But the elder could no longer be seen. Bambi stepped very slowly out of the bushes, saw a well tangled golden rods in front of him. Raised his head and looked around. There was not a blade of grass moving. As far as he could see, he was alone. If nothing now, to tell him what to do. The urge to flee quickly took hold of him. As he rushed through them, the golden rods were divided and broad hiss. It had been cut, it had been, been cut down with a sigh. It was a long time wandering. Not so far as before he found a feline. He breathed as he was tired. He was happy and deeply moved. Please, my love, he said, please don't call me when we are apart. Never call me again. You can look for each other until we find each other. But please don't call me. Call to me as your voice is something I cannot resist.